when we take a look at the profiles, public roles, remember, when we look at this phrase of role model, the language that we use here is really important to differentiate. In role gates, we know that the seven, its role of interaction with others, gate seven, uh, line six is the administrator. So the administrative role model, you know, or the um, objective, objectivity, the observatory capacity of what a six is. Instead of the um, just taking it at face value, remember the multidimensionality of a profile, yeah, our public roles. We have many faces, we wear many masks, and it depends on the context in which we come into alignment with an other, whether that's correct alignment or incorrect encounter, always coming from a place of awareness, most important thing to come to grips with, yeah? Levine is actually um, teaching with eyes closed. <laughs> we'll see how, that, how well that works in, in doing the, <laughs> the actual slides. The visual stimulation helps so much. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I focus. Hang on a second. When we're looking at our roles in human design, it's about living out the fullest expression and experience of the costumes that we wear, remember? The most important thing when you look at sex, you see a tripartite life process. You see a trial and error in the first 30 years. And you see that spaciousness of being able to pull away from that experiential process, lick one's wounds, through the um, reflection upon what happened in your first 30, your childhood, because 30 is the end of childhood, when one can come from this place of awareness at 50 and beyond. It is a very different experience than when one comes from a place of being out of integrity or alignment with what you came here for. The nature of our design, in order for us to live out the life's work, we have to attune to our profiles or our public roles. So being correct within the nature of your design is what gets you to that place of alignment to the costume that you wear, the purpose fulfillment through this mind in context with this body, that body being the life purpose fulfillment. Remember, awareness, conceptual, motivational awareness, and then form differentiation. Very, very different um, this binary of what we know in human design to be true, the consciousness in you being a duality. And you are such an incredible specificity. And when we can relax into that specificity, now we come from a place of authenticity, the six, unique, as a role model of itself. So when you're looking at a role model, you're looking at an example of someone's unique purpose yeah, six, two, six, three, an example of oneself. Think Buddha, Bodhisattva. These are incredibly mm, lofty goals, one might say. And yet, if one if, is in alignment with one's truth, then coming from this place of authentic costume fulfillment of purpose, then we can come to this place of emergence, like the cocoon opening up. And that magnificent moth or butterfly, <laughs> butterfly for the daytime people, moth for the nighttime people. When we understand terminology of our costumes or roles in this life, the emergence of what human design was first and foremost is about differentiation. And sixes are about an evolutionary process. If we go back to um, seven-centered process. That was a very different life. The seven-centered human was the end of the key role in the development of humanity being heretical. That was the end, 1781, of heretics being in power. Now as we move into this shift, it's about the six. It's time for the sixes to rise. 
Ra was a fifth line personality, the archetype of what it is to be heretical for strangers, built for strangers, built for the impact, because fives do have impact, regardless of one's type. Basically, the end of seducing someone. Standing up for truth may be a little bit more difficult in an era which is about role modeling. That's what fives do. They stand up for truth. They put out the call. Ra said the tradition of the seven-centered being, those gurus and masters, and all that collection of teachers and messengers, because a messenger teacher, yeah, 5-1, was part of the seven-centered consciousness evolution, which was rooted in seduction, which was followers and leaders, wolves and sheep, you know. People like us do things like this in order to transcend the form and embrace the spirit, that this is a temporary vehicle, that we, the eternal nature is just this whatever soul yeah seven centered so they did all kinds of self-flagellation and starvation and things to the body in order to transcend that's not this day and age this day and age is about treating one's individuality with respect to its form principle so that the differentiation can happen we're caught in the thrall of what we inherited out of the seven-centered species. We are not seven-centered, we are nine. And the nine, its time has come, that role model time. So from seven to nine, it went from five to six. And the six, if we look at the behavior of the self, remember, all of our role gates, the role model is the perfect expression of the norms through action rather than words. That's what the lifetime learning is for any role model, any role model, regardless of whether they have a 10.6 in their design. This is their life learning, action rather than words. So if we look at the Pluto exaltation, the constant example that refocuses the complacent on the basic integrity set of behavior. In other words, the enduring value of the expression of the self through action rather than words. Saturn detriments, the hypocrite, do as I say, not as I do. Behavior restricted to words rather than action. The vast extreme swing between these two, mm, the, the same side, or same side, the different sides of the same coin, there we go. So this deep expression of how we understand role models, we've inherited it from the past if you look at the sixth line in the Ray of I Ching, you will not see the third line way. You will not see the completion of this mutation because the sixth line is moving beyond. What's next? What's down the line of circuitry? Down the line of mm, whatever empowerment, sharing, support there is for that person with their public role that is, in fact, here to evolve. That's what a six is. They're evolutionary, different, unique. And so you see somebody whose actions match their words or not. You may see somebody who is a hypocrite. That is someone who tells you what to do but does not do it themselves. That is the attunement that you might have. So these are two variations of what it is to be a seven-centered six line. Remember how Rao said the Rave I Ching was written for the not self? The extreme, rather than being in alignment with your form or mind, in this case, mental differentiation, aware, embodied, being, locked into one side or the other from the mind's perspective rather than learning the perfection, perfect expression of the norms through action rather than words. This is the stage upon which a mutation takes place. Remember, sixes are mutative. Mutative. They're moving to the next hexagram. 
So the reason there is no third way expressed in any six lines, and it's important to understand that, is that there's no way to express it. How do we express it? We have our Chiron return, where they are, that role model. We have our Uranus opposition, where they are, on the roof. We have our Saturn return, yeah, up until Saturn. They go through a third line phase. And this third line phase, you learn about, and you go, hmm, okay, do I go read the third line? When you learn about these third line processes, remember, the third line is adaptable, it is resilient, it is not six. So you cannot just go simply read third line and see, oh, this is what it's like. No. When you learn about human design and any six line, we tell you it goes through a maturing process, yes? And if you are a six, two, or a six, three, or a three, six, or four, six, those sixes go through a mutative, lifelong journey that takes 50 years to emerge, to evolve, to fulfill the life purpose. So when you talk about the first or second part, it may be clear and understandable to those of us who are studying and yet to those clients that you are encountering, helping, advising, guiding, how can we get it across? Well, universalization day, simply, simply say it takes time to fully mature. All six line processes go through a long, long 50 years maturing cycle. That's it. Yeah, it'll take time to evolve. It'll take time to grasp their tribal. It'll take time to share their collective. It'll take time to be empowered, individual. That really landed when I heard that because the frequency shift that one can have when one has encountered the challenges in one's life that helps one to awaken they are not something that one can force. The encounters with the people who teach you something because of their reactivity or flexibility, whatever it happens to be, your encounters with very specific people are what helps you to emerge. I see it. But can you be it? If you're a sex role model, you're looking to guide that person. They're going to go off the roof. What does that mean? On the personality side, if they're not living in alignment, they are going to have mental breakdowns. On the body side, the body starting to break down. So, Ra says, I quote, if you're going to got trying to guide a person off to go off the roof, and I know, I've been there, trying to do that for years to get six line beings to recognize that their life is in danger when they're at the edge of that roof, literally, that their life is in danger, how important it is for them to be correct. But I don't know what it's going to mean when they're off the roof. There's no way of knowing. In fact, it is not simply a matter that it's in their profile. It's the particular cross. It's the design. It's the color. It's the tones. It's the bases. It's the this and that. It goes on and on and on in its uniqueness. So there is no way of knowing what that expression is. This is only possible when you have fulfilled or are fulfilling your purpose. That's what it's all about, unquote. Lecture 7, page 107, Profile, Purpose, and Function. Okay, so Uranus opposition on the roof, whether you're 3, 6, 4, 6, 6, 2, 6, 3s, in terms of profile, remember this applies across the board, even though later we're going to go through the costumes again from only 6-2 and 6-3, because we're looking at true role, we're taking it line by line. The dilemma of the not self or Saturn cycle, because hey, they're not threes, but they go through a third line process is something that they have to live through and you cannot protect them from this you got a child who's a six two or any six line profile, public role, they are going to go through the trenches. How can one lead by example or be trustworthy 
if one has not lived it? Would you go to a teacher who's spouting off human design knowledge and not able to embody it? They just learned it yesterday. And now they're putting out YouTube channels created by ChatGPT. What to do? Would we follow that robot? No. This is about individuation, form, differentiation. So when you're looking at them, the process of their going up onto the roof, this end of the process for the seven-centered six-line being on the roof, Ra's way of understanding this is that they, as they enter into their roof stage, now, what I've heard from them, because I'm not six, what I've heard from them is that it's a long, slow climb or scrabbling upward. Now, were they self or not self? Who am I to judge? But this climb, as they enter into their roof stage, this last stage that they will ever have, they get more distant, they get colder, they get more aloof, they get further away, and that's the end of their process, no mutation. When they're in Uranus opposition, per pulling further and further and further away from the life, and yet, what if they're six too? And the body is pulled down, yeah, called off the roof. But the mind is, nope, aloof. What to do? Help them come back to their decision-making strategy, if you can, their authoritative process, if they can. And the three, banging around body-wise, I am refocusing on where we're going, which is 6263. The three, continually, trial and error bonds made and broken so uranus opposition remember since 1781 this mutation has been in place because that's when we went from seven centered to now nine centered being born so everything about what human design has to offer us is our way of understanding our genetic imprints in order to align to our differentiated unique my mind said cosmic difference. Interesting. How to live in this body during mutative times. How to live in this form correctly. You're on a supposition. Yeah? You're on the roof. Now what? The focus on this in this time and era is that we're looking at how this chart is being assembled, you could say. Mm. The external, that's what nodes are, the we, yes? Where we encounter others on this path in our trajectory, how we see where we be. The nodes of the moon represent the life, the external contact with life, and the way that we see, we take in life. So those nodes representing a division of the life based on our Uranian cycle. We have this literally radically changing mutation shift. What does Uranus stand for? Sudden, yeah? Chaos, innovation, mutation, shocking, transformative, evolvement that is sudden, radical in its shift. So this new life pattern that is nine-centered, that started in 1781. Instead of maturing and Saturn return to die, now we have 84 years to be healthful in our attunement to this form, to have our full faculty cognitive difference, 84. How many people do you see retaining their faculties till 84 nowadays? Not many. The viability of our pattern, our imprint, our genetic roles now, it's carried through the six-line process. They are the ones who are carrying the mutation and conditioning all of us to it, literally. These are our people that we can see. Ah, that one. That one is a role model. That one is a trustworthy leader. Not maybe desirously, potentially quite innocently, standing there as an example. Five ones are not mutative in that way. It is the six that is carrying the mutation. All of us, though, 
even though we're not six, we all experience, listen close, because this was uh, something I found very interesting. Uh, I don't remember where all he rec uh, says it, but the every single human being now, because we are in a six line process, tripartite life process, all of us go through this tripartite life process. It is the six, though, that is carrying the mutation. So Ross says, I'm a 5-1, I'm not mutative. Yet I get to experience transitions. Don't you? I do. You too, right? You went through your Saturn? Maybe. You went through your Uranus? Maybe. Have you yet reached your Chiron? Then you went through it. That is the flowering. This is the new cycle that the six line role models are carrying and conditioning us to this. They are conditioning, carrying this mutation, our tripartite life process, regardless of what public role or profile you have. And that's why we do cycle analysis in this way. The fact is, unfortunately for those of us who do not carry the six, we are not as equipped as the six line can be to live in this new age or new era as survivors because the pressure isn't on us. We take all the conditioning from all the surviving sixes in order to mutate. He says surviving because um, according to his prophecy, there will be a very strong contraction of the human species. I do not know exactly when that will happen. Does anybody remember? Do let me know. <laughs> when you come off of the roof within the context of the program, you are either going to demonstrate this mutation, demonstrative role model, or it's a failed mutation. And that means you're out. You're out. Ah, if we think about the 28.6 blaze of glory, yeah, people just out. That mutation didn't work. If a, if a mutation is failed, it dies. It dies out, literally. Body die, form die, or personality die. Might be a long, slow, drawn out death, suicide by whatever means. Yeah. Ross says, the scientists with their fireflies, or whatever it is they play around with, and they change a little bit of this and this one, a little bit that and that one, and they wait to see what's going to work. And the ones where it doesn't, they drop dead. Oof. Horrible when people experiment on animals and such. So the third line phase in the first part of the life, that is their vulnerability for a six line being before 30. Like the kangaroo mama who's carrying the joey in the pouch the pouch okay saturn cycle saturn return you're still in the pouch you're still in childhood before that 30s there's this old-fashioned seven-centered vulnerability of living life hard and fast think about um people who uh, burn out before 30 that um 30s club, the famous people that die before 30, yeah, for whatever reason, because they lived a really rough life. The wild card in the deck, all these things that you have to encounter in order to learn what can be trusted, six line, or what is trustworthy. If you haven't gone through the trenches yourself, why would anybody trust you that you've been there, done that? So they have to go through that process. All of us do. Saturn. Slow, slow maturation of our process, our evolutionary process. So when it comes to this material that Ra taught, what matters is that the moment Chiron came around the block, when you're on trial mutatively and quite literally, the Chiron return is your 50s. Are you going to evolve as the role model that you are? Or are you going to, again, have the opportunity, like with Saturn, crash and burn and be on, uh, on the outs, the body breaking down, the mind making breaking down? So 
to get to this place of 2027, the evolution, the evolvement, remember, we are homo sapiens in transitus from 1781 to 2027, living in a nine-centered vehicle whose time has not yet come, not truly, not the full-blown mutation. So this movement towards the emergence of the potential of the rave, as we have seen, is this huge evolutionary shift. And not all of us are going to survive. We wouldn't, none of us are going to come out alive anyway. <laughs> but who's going to carry that mutation? Who's going to contribute that leadership? We don't know anything but the cross of planning. Because this cross of planning, 1615 to 2027, we were all born in it, we've been raised in it, immersed in it, bathed in it, educated in it, homogenized in it. There has never been a nine-centered being that wasn't determined by this background frequency shift, all of us being subject to this cross of planning purview, the consistent background frequency. None of us are immune. And we all have to emerge out of that background frequency because we were born in it. That community, that talent, that focus, all of the things that are part of this cross, little tiny details, skills, identification with logic, being able to be enthusiastic or not, language, skills. All of this has been the basis of the supportive, mm, pregnant pause between these two types of creatures, seven-centered and nine-centered. When we get to 2027, it's a totally different cycle. Nobody who has ever lived in these forms here and now, still to this day, know what that is or what it's like. You can guess. Good luck. It'll be a shock. Yeah, it's part of the background frequency. The whole direction will be a shock. Are you going to survive that so shock? <laughs> In alignment with your form differentiation, you'll get exactly the death you were built to handle. Nobody understands what it's going to feel like when that goes away. It will just turn the wheel. It will turn off all of these mm, imprinting, these Mm, see the line ones there. That's what's currently activated in transit, the background frequency field. Where the foundation is, this is our last chance in Eden, according to Ra, to eat from the tree of knowledge, the inner truth. He says to get your fill because we'll never see it again. There will be no masters to teach you in future. Because what are ones about? Ones are the foundational element the essence in order to be authoritative expertise their time is almost gone and as we shift into this new different era new age that backward retrograde procession of the equinox yeah because you can see the shift has moved backwards that's how processions of the equinox work. So we're thrown into this totally different era, the phoenix, the phoenix that rises from the ashes, the phoenix that has to die, it will awaken and die in order to be reborn. I'm quoting that from someplace else, a memory recently of Ra's words, the phoenix will awaken and die in order to re be re reborn, be reborn. The 30, 24, the 55, a mutated 59, this deep individual survival busyness and selfishness, the era of enlightened selfishness of the six, being up on its <laughs> perch, looking with a far ranging view. And so if we think about these sixes, all of those sixes, the wisdom, wisdom, right? 20.6, the era of wisdom. The power of that 34, common sense in this mutation. Remember, these are all mutative lines. 
and everybody will be challenged. Live as a role model of yourself because if you don't, you will perish. It's not the time of heretics anymore, long gone. It's now the time of the role models to step up. Can you nourish your form differentiation in order that those role model places in you make that leap into the mutative shift? It's not like you can effort your way into it. You can relax, you can allow, you can breathe, you can be, you can evolve differently because all of us will. We have our own mountain to climb, our own path to walk. And when you do that, it will feel satisfying, successful, peaceful, surprising, regardless of the pain that you might encounter, temporary flashes in the pan, to be sure, when you let go of your mind running the show. This cycle of planning, the cycle of the phoenix, this vast, vast, vast amount of human beings. Imagine 100 years, so we're thinking from 2027 to 20, what, 2127, yes? So 2127, and then most of everybody has died out that were nine-centered homo sapien in transitus. Ah, now full-blown cycle of the phoenix emerge because everything that we have, live, breathe, do for work and worthiness and appreciation and value and loyalty, it's all been immersed, immersed in this background frequency field that is not the new era. It's old, it's dead, it's corrupt, it's on, a, on the outs. So this 4037, there are very few crosses that are like this who have the definition as an arm of the cross yeah? Explanation. Phoenix. This community. Mm. Planning. Very few of them that do that. What else is there, my friends? Cycles. That's another one. Um, service. Now, but when it comes to the two meeting up, within the Sun-Earth configuration, either personality or design, that's where it's quite rare. So this shift, it's a huge shift. I mean tribal to not just individual, but we're talking integration now. What is the difference between tribe and integration? So much. 2034s don't care about anybody else. They're too busy looking after themselves in the now. And so busy, ambitious, doing my own thing. Who cares about you and your laws and your contracts and your rules and your regulations? It's going up in smoke. You can see that with the decay of the governments and the institutions. It's already happening. What's going to replace that support of planning? I'm not even talking about individuality. When you talk about 34, 20, it's integration, not individual. Individual, yes, 57, 20. But here, no. It's self-empowerment. My power is for myself and myself only, not you and your tribe and your corrupt institutions. 3420 has no problem with not being supportive of the other. What a radical shift in this background frequency field. So you see, children are not going to be beholden to the elders and the laws and the rules and the way things have always been done because this is the way things have always been done. Sorry, it's gone, near gone. What to do? It is what it is. So, so the role model, Ross said we had to go into that to understand the role model because of the new era, the new shift, yes? Where we're looking at the sixth line quality, its evolutionary process, its ability to mutate. This future is not going to be supportive of seduction being able to be the way that humanity is led. No more promises, no more lies. All that there is and can be is someone's inner, individual, personal 
authority, the only thing that you can count on, the only thing that you can rely on. Outside authorities will not work for you to base your decision-making process in. You cannot count on their communal support because it will be all hands on deck and everyone for themselves and down goes the ship and out rises the phoenix from the ashes. So there won't be security like we've had. It will be gone. Self-empowerment, please. It's kind of like if you um, microcosmic um, cycle mm, example of this. You know when you go to Whole Foods and now there's like maybe one or two, maybe if you're lucky, three checkout checkers. Depends on how big your Whole Foods is, I suppose. And yet there are four, eight, four on each side. I'm thinking of mine. Eight ways to self-check, self-check, self-serve. The communal support is gone. The cycle is deeply mutative and the rave emerging out of our forms. So remember six, role model, evolve, emerge. Great words for them besides role model, besides authenticity. As we go through this next spiral of transition through the color underneath, as we have done, when we look at the role model in this context, again, we're primarily looking at 6-2 because we only look at one transitional profile with the 6-3, the harmonic, yes? So herein lies the true outer authority of the role model. Let's dive in. We begin with the, the principle of divine selfishness. If we think about the 6 and its... Mm, color resonance it's about spirit yeah sixth line divine selfishness and divine selfishness is that you're never looking at anything for a particular pointedness you don't need a reason detach or unattach that is the six huge detachment is necessary when a six line quality is denying conditioning it's not about the other, it's about self. The true, if we recall, do you recall how four is externalized? Five is the differentiation of the hexagram, the fullest expression of uniqueness. Six must be detached or unattached from its hexagram process in order to evolve. No one and nothing can stop this mutation because it's a matter of form principle, is what I hear. So what is going on here, the hermit underneath the body, ways of way of being, is what a truth, hey? The easiest way to be yourself is to be alone. So true. Anybody a 6'2 or walking through a 6'2 costume? I am. Oh, can you resonate with this? You can be alone in your own aura and you can be you. The moment you step into somebody else's frequency, chemistry, even taking it in from the acoustic realm, I can feel the shift happening inside to be pulled towards a call, what is natural. We can never avoid each other, though. We live in communities. Even if we live alone in our own hut or hermitage, we have to go somewhere to buy something for the most part. Although in this day and age, we have uh, Amazon. How nice. Don't have to go into those was so often anymore. This is where we must begin. There is a need to be called if you are a hermit, wherever you are too, it's imperative to recognize that specific call for you. Role models do not initiate. There is nothing worse in the 6-2 than somebody who is initiating something. They need to be called. Call, waiting for the call. Role model 6-2, no need to be called. They're on the roof. There, do, there is this need to be called. 
And in this third line phase, there is this need to be called. So the true authentic self of the role model, I no need to be called. <laughs> Sorry, pigeon English from Hawaii. No need. The six, just being in its evolutionary process. If you're a six, the call is everything. Six two, the call is everything. What to do? We're waiting for the right call. What if you are not operating in alignment with your form and you're trying to push yourself out there, be somebody that you're not, put out this heresy when it's not really your truth? When you're in mutation and you've entered into the process of living in accordance with you being your own authority, there is no hmm, sensation of waiting because waiting is the attunement to being. It's like Wu Wei or do without doing and the doing gets done. The being is. We're talking about the role model mind, which means as an outer authority, it can be an example. But it's not offering something out of integrity. It's just demonstrating the model. It is a demonstrative model of itself, which is very different. Divine selfishness. Ra called human design the school of enlightened selfishness in one of his programs. Everybody should look after themselves. The role model is aware of that. Why can't they just look after themselves? So role models get dragged off of their hill. Ra would call them fool on the hill. They get dragged off into the village and spend their life in the muck, but that's not where they belong. When you're lost and you're desperate, you could approach a role model. You can see that they, in their divine selfishness, unlike you, are not confused about what to do. They're not uncomfortable in their skin. That is something that makes them so deeply mm, visible and potentially attractive. I find them attractive. I get tons of 6'2s or 6'3s more rarely because they are rare, but my eyes see the 6. That's where my nodes, conscious personality nodes are. I see. I'm attuned to their view, my view of them. They're profoundly divine in their selfishness. And those two coming together, it can seem like, wait, what do you mean? Watch, wait, observe, listen, pay attention to what you hear and see and know of the sixes in your life. You don't have to try and figure it out. Just observe. You may see them. See them in their divine selfishness. Ra calls them the most profound word-of-mouth marketers that ever existed, demonstrating the model. This role model, he would tell the story, one of his favorite stories, illustrating the difference of the transition from the five, fifth line, heretical seduction to the sixth line, role model. So we have this crazy heretic that comes into the villagers and tells the villagers that God told them it's going to rain and it's not going to stop and they better build a boat. They better build a raft. They better get something in order to survive the divine floods that God was going to call down in punishment. And of course, villagers are like crazy, crazy lady or not, guy, they. <laughs> that heretic is mad. Oh. But some people might go, oh, they're seeming really paranoid. Or they might attune to them and say, well, maybe he knows what he's talking about. He is a stranger after all, and maybe he knows better than us, blah, 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 blah. So then the people in the village go up to the fool on the hill, Ra would call them, up to the six. What do you think? What the six says can either lead to the heretic being stoned to death or lead to those villagers building an ark. That is the power here and now of the role model, a huge power. Go look at the famous people out there with their sixes. Who is it out there that is walking their talk or not? When you keep fractal record links like Ra did, he looked at how many different people were in his life at different times. And he began in design with so many sixes in his life 
because that process of introducing human design was he was the heretic and they were all the fools on the hill. If he could get them to get it, then anybody asking them would be moved because that's their power. Look at Marianne Winnegar. Like her or not, people follow. <laughs> My mind said, because we are sheep. <laughs> Some of us are not. We are wolves, yes? When we operate in integrity and alignment. The power that comes out of their six line quality authority, there's nothing like being an authority outer authority anybody can be an outer authority on anything but in this time day and age you be your own authority for your personal decision making strategy honoring yourself and integrity and the focus is on you when you enter into design isn't it as a six line being you have to recognize that correctness is everything absolutely everything walk your talk because the inner authority or personal authority, if you don't have inner authority, no, in, no direct inner authority, Ra would say about in some places about the reflector, no direct inner authority. On the website, on the software, no inner authority. Or your process of authority if you are mental projected and 6-2. It's only the inner process or personal process of authority as a role model hermit that someone is ever going to have the opportunity to deal with the right call and express their natural gifts in divine selfishness with awareness. And whether that gift is expressed through the details of a teacher or the gift of the guru or to point out the key as a priest they're going on and on and on whatever this outer authority process is yeah teacher guru priest prophet messenger or buddha 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 we shall see it per carries a profound impact on the other from the perspective of this is the new era. It's their time now. Sixes rise to the occasion in transition, in mutation, because it is their transpersonal destiny. It is their right by karma. We require them to stand up and stand out in authenticity, without pointedness, waiting for the call. Is it your time? Have you been called? Are you here to answer that call? When we see the real story in the spirals, remember, you can understand that everything from six turns into one. And that's the way that it goes. So it goes as we spiral through space and time in our evolutionary journey. It's not that anybody is better than or worse than. It's just a process. Ra had this course called the 64 steps, the evolutionary process around the wheel. You're seeing the microcosm of the steps between profile, that, that stepping that happens, and their gates, whatever gates that you are looking at, that you are oriented to. So when you get to the end, that 6-3, evolution leads us to the 1-3 and just a new part of the process in this evolutionary journey and spiral. That role model martyr, you're always in this place of transition here, on the edge of the wheel with this martyr underneath, harmonic. <laughs> My mind said, that's tectonic. Yes, an evolutionary shift indeed. The role model can truly grasp the plane, hermit role models, that hermit naturally attuned with its talents, with its gift, and out, out of the hermit waiting for its call, the role model mind, its outer authority, what you can do as far as wisdom that you live, breathe, and be. This mutative evolvement that you can demonstrate to an other in answer to their call. In answer to the call of not just their call, but your own internal built-in innate karmic fulfillment of purpose transpersonally with the right others, we require you, 6-2. We cannot fulfill our life's work without you being you. This mutative shift, what to do? 
the six, three. Here, with the three, it's about the physical material plane. Remember how two <laughs> rhymes with guru, and indeed, that is its role, right? Two and guru, naturals, just waiting. Not the physical material plane like the three. The three, role model martyr, is all about something that is deeply fr profound in this life. Six threes understand that the wheel keeps turning and that there's nothing you can trust. There's nothing you can hold on to. You better be yourself and you better be unique. That is the way that you can fulfill your karmic purpose. These six threes know that because they see the world. They're up there. It's not about other people, although some of them are in incredibly mm, designed by nature to focus or receive the energies of the other. Ross says, I'm not saying they don't trust people or they don't trust the world. They see that everything can go wrong. They promise the promises that can be broken and that every single pattern can dissolve. Every truth can crumble. Nothing is stable. This is their gift to see the mutation at work in their own body and beyond. So these are the ones that can ultimately assure us of the fact that we stand on this threshold of a new age. And it means even though we're there, we don't have to be afraid. Do you have a 6-3 in your life? Have you seen them rise in their Kiron? Yes, it's still difficult. They are three, after all. But they're built perfectly to handle that in their divine selfishness. Ross says that humanity is lost in fear. Of course, the background frequency shield field shift from one. We're in the fear age still. That is the basis of the not-self. It's a seep, deep sickness and fear of life, the unknowable, fear of change, those who are one or vibrating, resonating to that one, they are holding on to constructs that no longer serve. We need role models because they are the ones who can show us that everything is in transition, just like everything, anything else. And if you're in aligned correctness, operating out of your cognitive difference, your intelligence, the uniqueness of your form differentiation, it's all okay. You can handle it. You can trust that. You can trust you. You know what to do. Quote, Ross says, I look at all of sixes, six lines, six colors, six tones. They're the mechanism. They're the ones that can bring change into life. Not that they simply carry a new demarcation in the frame of our longevity, but they finally lead us out of the wilderness of being a seven-centered knockoff. And they lead us into the promised land of the new age, the so-called age of Aquarius, that age in which we carry the wisdom of our on our own shoulders and every once in a while we let others drink from that well but in absolute correctness in perfect divine selfishness teach it to your children teach it to your grandchildren divine selfishness this is the only way unquote role model roles page 115 and 116 so when you follow your own personal authority, when you are your own authority, this strategy and authority being such an incredible gift, you are utterly unique. No one can tell you what to do because you are your own authority on what is right for you. The bedrock, quote rock, the bedrock of anything that is going to be possible for the well-being of any human being as they move forward this and to be reminded of something that no matter what level of the knowledge that one penetrates that in the end the quality of your life the beauty of your process will always be dependent on whether you follow your inner authority it's the key unquote so saith raw thanks raw okay so for those role models, going back to the role models that are out there, lost in transference, that suffer the pain of role models when he sees them, and he sees them, saw them all the time, when they can't get rid of the third line pessimism, that first 30 years, Saturn return, 
They drag that pessimism onto the roof rather than being aloof, rather than developing their uh, role of attunement to that objective nature. If they drag the pessimism here, they're never going to heal from that first 30 year cycle. If they can't get rid of it, if they bring it through the roof phase, they never get to the other side because the third line theme is so devastating when you're incorrect. The not self plague of these role models is hanging on to that pessimism. Remember, third lines designed by nature to be pessimistic, a natural protective layer. But that's not what a six is. The six on the roof becomes something unique and different. And that's its cocooning phase, the cocooning phase here, here, Uranus opposition era, area, <laughs> the not self is quite damaging. They're not resilient or adaptable wherever six is, like the third is truly. And so that vulnerability being carried because a mind that is out of its mind, not aligned, cannot make any sense of one's life when you're making mental decisions from an inauthentic place and not trusting the form, the body, the vehicle to take you through life, to sail you and weather any storm in these calm or tumultuous seas. In this reality, each one of us has our own imprinting to attune to, and everyone is designed to see things uniquely. And just because someone says something is so, doesn't make it so. Only you know what to do to role model your authenticity. When you meet these people, remember you help them. You can. You can help them, you, in this system, because you understand, potentially, maybe, if it's right for you, but especially if you're attuned like me, I see with my sixes in my nodes. Maybe you be with your sixes in your nodes in an environment that is populated by role models. Are they walking their talk? Are they authentic? Are they living in their truth of divine selfishness? Any role model you can teach to get into that place of inner authority can be more powerful of a configuration than any other profile period. Now, it's not in the sense of huge audiences, five, that's stranger business, everybody. Four, that's influencers, only the friends. No, sixes are here for those who are ready for that encounter. They're walking their talk. They're living their divine selfish truth. So Ra says, it is, quote, it is about their impact in those moments in which their role model is called upon. Remember the two, yes? And their expression of outer authority carries the power and the wisdom of a unique authority. What is outer authority? The ability to have a unique, differentiated perspective given to an other without an agenda. Can you let go of the seven-centered construct of strategic, mm, active principles that may no longer suit nor serve? Can you stand as a demonstration of the model, the nine-centered model? There's nothing like that in all of the other roles this role model this is the only yeah transpersonal karmic fulfillment of purpose to live the potential of what it is to be an awake and aware role model there is there are people out there who are just going to be walking it being it not strategically trying to get other people to follow them just buddha bodhisattva to lead others to stand alone. I liken it to the channel of awakening, design of higher principles, yeah? It's leadership capacity is speaking to the truth that everyone must lead themselves, all individuals have that truth. 
lead yourself, be yourself. Stand alone in your own authority. My mind wants to say sovereignty. The great struggle is that we are here to teach others, more and more beings, how to stand alone in an era that taught them that you cannot stand apart, that it will kill not only you, but our tribal way of life. And this is the transformation that we are called to, to further bring forth the message of form differentiation, should it be right for you. Standing alone to discover your selfhood. You can love yourself at last and truly be open to the other because it is part of your alignment. If you are here now, you can love yourself no matter what other people say, no matter what your own mind might think. You can love yourself. You can because it is what this system is here for. You are unique. You have no choice. Love yourself. Just love yourself. The most oft-repeated words of Ra.